So the name Leica, probably, ouch. I probably first heard the name Leica when I was sort of mid to late teens. Always into my photography. Leica was one of those names that cropped up from time to time throughout my life. And it's, it's always been there in the background, sort of chipping away at me. Leica, Leica, Leica. You know what I mean? Whatever camera I've got. And I've, I've had some cracking cameras. I've still got some cracking cameras. I've never felt I needed a Leica. But I always knew, something in the back of my mind always told me that I wanted a Leica. I finally got one. In my case, I got the Leica Q2. It took me 40 odd years to get the Leica. And uh, just 14 days to kill it. Yeah. That's not too flash. I bought it initially for landscapes and for street photography, documentary photography, all day, every day, anything photography. I was getting some nice shots. Here's a, here's a slideshow of some of the photographs I made in the first 14 days. I took it to an arts festival over in Napier and as part of the arts festival there was a, a laser show, a laser light show. Visually it was absolutely fantastic, loved it, made some nice photographs with it. The first part of the laser show that I photographed, I was kind of walking, I walked down a tunnel towards a, an underground sort of rave area, which was brilliant. As I was walking out of there, back up the tunnel, I could see a lot of people sort of coming and going and they were silhouetted by the laser lights above them and I thought, cracking shots. It was probably the first photograph I took actually, so I got the camera ready and all of a sudden the laser dropped down and bang, it, 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 you know it's quite bright on the eyes sort of thing, so I looked away and thought shit that was a bit uh, that was a bit keen, but man what a photograph. Looked on the LCD and I thought yeah that, that'll do, that's a nice, that's, that's pretty cool. Anyway so I carried on the rest of my evening and, uh, and, I, and I photographed loads of everything that was going on, more laser light shows, people knocking about, had a ball, had an absolute ball and I made some, what I consider some nice photographs. The next day when I started editing the photographs, I came across a photograph with the initial laser strike on it and there's a black line running down the sort of centre to the right hand side, all the way down the frame. Oh that's a bit weird that, what's that all about? Went to the next frame, the next frame, the next frame, every single frame after that you've got the black line running down the frame and then I thought oh that's a bit weird, what's that about? So I looked on the back of the camera on the LCD and you can see the line through the LCD. You look through the EVF and you can see the line down the down the frame 
and I thought well that's uh, that's not too flash so I reset the camera I did a pixel mapping sequence on the camera thinking might do it might do the trick didn't do the trick it's still there then I started getting worried and it is that particular photograph with the laser strike that's when my problems began and, and I know it's stupid because you know lasers dangerous do you point your camera at them you don't point your eyes at them why would you point a camera at them but I've photographed laser shows and, and, and concerts and, and events where there's been lasers for donkey's years and I've never once had a problem, never heard of the problem, never never heard of any issues with lasers and sensors, never on my radar at all. Once I've started looking back and researching, it can be a fatal problem for camera sensors and uh, in my case it is a fatal problem. So I contacted Leica New Zealand, told them what the issue was and they said look send it to us, we'll contact Leica Germany regarding repair, replacement and uh, get back to you. So the long and short of it, the camera is now winging its way to Germany for a rather expensive new sensor which is uh, brilliant yeah fingers crossed everything should be okay insurance wise so i'm not too concerned about that of more concern is that i've got now 16 weeks 16 week turnaround time minimum because of some pandemic lack that we've had so it's delayed everything and oh 16 weeks anyway that's a long time in my book that's going to be next year yeah but i have got a cunning plan in the 14 days that i had the leica i mostly loved it the massive megapixel size, which I, which I knew about at the time. Man, it's filling. I've only had it two weeks. It's almost filled with bloody hard drive already. So I've, I've bought a couple of extra sort of external hard drives. So I'm going to shift everything that I shoot onto the external hard drives, and that should free up my space and and my uh, my punch power on the laptop. So uh, that's that's okay. That's that's by the by. I knew that was coming. One thing that did surprise me actually, everything I read about the the Q2 is that low light performance is absolutely stellar. I really didn't find that. The noise is something I wasn't expecting. Maybe it's just my shooting technique that needs adjusting, I don't know. But other than that, I've got to say the build quality, the feel, everybody talks about Leica being industrial, tank-like, definitely not tank-proof, as the laser proved, but it's tank-like, you know, it's got that feel, that build, that heft to it. I really do like the feel and the look of the Q2. So uh, for the next 16 weeks, I've come up with a cunning plan. I've got a bid on another Leica camera online, it was dropped at some point, damaged the rear LCD, so that's not functioning whatsoever. But apparently, according to the seller, everything works through the EVF. So it'll be just like, to me, it'll be just like shooting a film camera with no, no sort of review on the back of the camera, which I'm really not bothered about, as long as the camera works. It's nearly a model, it's the Leica Q, as opposed to Leica Q2, but the benefit of the Leica Q, smaller file size, smaller megapixel count, which is which will do me, 20, I think it's 24 megapixels, as opposed to 47 point odd megapixels, so I'm quite happy with that. Because there's less megapixels, the noise is not as apparent. Go figure. Who knew that? I didn't know that, but uh, there you go. The more megapixels in a camera you have, the more noise you will see because the megapixels are crammed close together and whatever. It's all maths and technology and stuff. I don't understand it. I don't really, I'm not really interested in it. All I know is that, you know, less megapixels, less noise. Okay, bring that on. I'll have some of that. The one thing I did like about the Q2, obviously, was the weather ceiling. That was a big factor in me buying the camera, as opposed to the Leica Q initially. I do like to photograph in harsh weather. With the Leica Q2, I had no concerns about that whatsoever. I did shoot on a few wet, miserable, horrible days and the Q2 never battered an eyelid. With the Q, if I get the Q, if I get it, it's, I've got a bid on, I'm leading the bid at the moment, and it's going cheap, so. So, I won the online auction, 1920 New Zealand dollars, which was a little bit more than I wanted to pay for it, but as it's a Leica, and Leicas tend to hold the price quite well, my thoughts are, once the Q2 returns, I'll resell the Q, unless I decide that I really love the Q, and then I might flog the Q2. Who knows? I'm actually starting to think that this is exactly how insanity starts to kick in. But anyway, until next time guys, thanks for your support, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again soon.